Hello, good day, and welcome back to Go on a Run. And we'll continue looking at NAS connective technology. In this video, we're going to be playing with streams on the command line. And we did some illustrations to show how streams would work and persist message and some of the benefits of using a stream and so on. Today, we're going to go to the command line and use the NAS CLI command line tool to play with streams. We're going to create the streams, we're going to send messages to it, we're going to consume messages from it, that sort of thing, delete the stream. We're not going to do any coding in this video. In the next video, we'll actually write some Go code to play with streams. Okay, so let's jump in. So I'm going to start by going to my command line and I have a directory called episode 09, for which this is. I'm going to open up my VS Code editor. Notice I don't have any files in this directory. So I'm going to start with a new file. I'm going to call it natserver.conf. So we can put our configuration since we've gotten used to using configuration. And I'm not going to create authentication, um, you know, section here. So authenticated user. So we're not going to do that. Instead, let's just go ahead and enable Jetstream by putting a configuration for Jetstream. And this is very easy. I simply need a um, field called Jetstream, and I'm going to leave it empty for now. In the future, we can see how to add different things for Jetstream. Okay, so this is all we need in our configuration to be able to start up NAS with this configure file, configuration file to enable Jetstream. By default, NAS server come with Jetstream built in, but is not enabled. Um, if you run the NAS server with minus help, you'll see that oh, there's an option down the bottom that says my, you can enable Jetstream by passing minus JS or dash jet Jetstream. So what you can do is run NAS server from command line, and you can see that oh, it starts up here without a configuration file. We've seen this before. But if you run NAS with a minus JS um, option from the help, we'll see what that looks like in terms of the difference. So you can see that it tells you that it's going to use this directory for storage. It's telling you how much memory it's going to use and that sort of thing. But again, since we have a configuration file, we want to use that instead. So we'll just start up NAT server this time using our configuration file. All right. So this is pretty simple. And then you can see from the output that it is, it, Jetstream is enabled because our configuration file has that field called Jetstream. Now, back at another terminal, so NAT is running fine in the background. I want to watch or keep looking at my streams that are created. And so I'm going to use this watch command with um, stream ls. Now, if you just run nat cli and just enter, you can see all these different commands that you can um, invoke. We've used the server command to create the password, but below the server command, you can see that there's the stream command. So that's the one I'm going to use. And if you do nats and then space and call the stream command without any option, you see that there are many other um, subcommands for stream, including, including like list, info, and that sort of thing. The one that I'm using that I'm going to use the watch for is list. It's a list all known stream. So that's what I have going on in the top left of um, section there of my terminal on the stream. So we can see that it says no stream defined. All right. So notice the first subcommand for stream is add. So that's the one we're going to use next. So before adding stream, I want to show that how the publishers don't really know or need to care about stream. So I'm going to run the NAT CLI to do a publish on orders that US subject. And so I'll public a, publish a message um, every two seconds. Notice how the publisher here is right into that subject and, and we can consume from this subject. Uh, we have a message being published every two seconds. So we should see the message being spit out here every two seconds, and it is, right? So we have orders 12, orders 13, order 14, and so on. Now, let's say we uh, want to start with another publisher, this time for the EU, right? Orders that EU. And we can also start this up, and it's going to be published on this subject. And again, since we're not doing request messages, what happened? If there are subscribers that are interested, they get the message. If there's, there are none, then that's it. The message is lost. It's not persisted. It's not saved Saved anywhere. This is just core NATS as we know it from before. And you can see that oh, we're still getting messages there. 
Now, I'm going to leave my publishers running. What I want to do now is create our stream, which says, I want you to store messages sent to these subjects. So we'll create a stream called um, orders. And notice when I press enter, I give me this question mark. So you could type question mark if you don't know what to type. And it tells you what you can uh, put for the subject and how it's how to enter subjects. So I can use orders.us and orders.eu, but I'll just use orders that start. It, for the other options, you can just press enter. So take the default. So that's sorting things in file. We don't have multiple clusters. So one replication is one is the only thing we can do. And then we can keep going down the list. If you just press enter, you'll see it. So your stream is going to be correct, created and it prints out a summary. And so we can see from the top left of my screen that I do have a stream called orders and it tells you when it was created, how many messages are in it and so on. And as you can see the messages keep number of messages are growing. So the thing is we can still consume message from our subject just as before. And so this would be for a client that doesn't really care for streaming. And it's just simply saying, I want to consume messages. And that's still works. Well, what if we want a client that wants to consume from the stream? Well, we can just use the same subscribe command to say it's always subscribing. But if we type help now, you can see that there's an option there called dash dash stream. And this says subscribe to a specific stream. And it says it requires Jetstream, which is what we have. We've enabled Jetstream. So now if we say we want to subscribe to the order stream, as you can see, we're getting the messages from the stream. Well, if we scroll back up the list, we'll see that we'll get in the very first message that was actually persisted in the stream. And we're going to get them in the order in which they were persisted in the stream. And if you look here, you're going to see you'll get a US order followed by two EU order followed by a US order. If we don't do anything, we'll still be getting the more recent messages being delivered to our um, client. Remember, for a consumer that consumes from a stream, it's going to get all the previous messages that were saved. And then once it catches up, it's going to get any new messages that's sent. Now, if we kill this client and start over, again, we'll get the previous messages that were saved and then any new messages. So what we can see is every new consumer that connects to the stream gets all the messages from the beginning of the stream, right? Whatever the oldest message is in that stream. Now, we mentioned durable consumer. So this would be a consumer who wants to connect, read some messages, and maybe it goes away or if it disconnects, it wants to come back, but it doesn't want to start from the very beginning. And it doesn't want to remember where it left off. To see the type of consumer we can create, we can use the NAT CLI command, and we'll see that there's a consumer command. So if we type NAT consumer, or we press enter, we'll see that oh, there's a consumer subcommand. If we type that consumer, we can see all its subcommand, and we can list known consumers and co copy consumers, all these other things. So let's list the known consumer. And notice if I don't specify a stream that I want to list consumer for, not give me the option for whatever streams are available. And of course, there are no consumer currently. Let's monitor the set of consumers we have for this stream. So for this, I'll stop our EU publisher. I'll stop my two publishers so we can restart. So let's see what options we have, commands we have for stream. And so let's purge our stream. And that basically resets it and gets rid of all the messages. But since we're not sending any message, we're not going to be adding any new message. So now let's start our US orders again. And this time, what we'll do um, is we're going to watch to see which consumers are connected to the consumer stream. Now, why reset it? Well, that way we have messages from, you know, message one essentially. So let's um, look at the consumer command to see what we have. and. We see that how for consumer, we can list the set of consumers. So if we do ls and um, help, we can see that what we need is to pass this name of the stream. Again, remember, if we don't pass the name of the stream, it's going to prompt us. Um, but since we're in the watch command, we don't want it to prompt because then um, it will be blocked waiting for an input. So now let's list this. We're listing all the consumers connect to our order stream. So once again, we can see that from the bottom right of left of our screen, we don't have any consumers. So let's start consuming. 
and so we start consuming we see we have this consumer with this strange name you know 4-S-U-H-S-J-G-E and so NAS is creating that consumer for us and if we scroll back up we can see that then we start consuming from the very first message message number one now let's stop this consumer and you'll notice on the bottom left, it's going to go away. That consumer is going away because we just disconnected. And let's start consuming again. And if you look, you can see we have a different consumer name because the previous consumer went away and this is a new consumer. And so we'll see that oh, this is a new consumer, so it must get from the very first message. And again, we see we get from message one. So every time we try to consume and we disconnect with a new consumer, Behind the scene, that's what was happening. We weren't seeing it. So this explains why each time we connect, we get the very first the message that the oldest message in the stream. Now, if we look at the subscription command, we will see that we can specify a durable parameter to say that we want to have a durable consumer. A durable consumer simply means that we're going to give a name to our consumer and keep reusing that name instead of it being randomly generated. Now we're going to subscribe to the stream order and for our dual consumer name, we're going to just say consumer one. I mean, we could use any name we want. And now when we press enter and start consuming from the stream, once again, we'll start with the very first message. And of course, we're getting all current messages that are new. And so let's scroll back up and we'll see we'll get from message one because this is the first time this durable consumer connected. And there we go. Now, if we stop consuming, so we stop consuming and the last message we got was 117. If we reconnect as the consumer using the same consumer name, which is consumer one, you will see that I will continue with message 18. Now notice, even though we disconnected, our consumer doesn't go away. Why? Because it's of type durable consumer. If Matt didn't remember um, our consumer was durable, we would be restarting with one and we don't want that. And so we can see now that oh, we start back with message 118 because the last message we had before we disconnected was 117. So once again, you can see that our durable consumer give you this ability to make sure you don't reprocess messages that you have previously processed. And you can still use queues as a way of doing distributed processing. So this is when you have multiple consumers consuming from the same stream or the same topic right so you can spread the load okay let's clean up that before we wrap up here so we see it so we can remove our consumer so let's do that um so we'll do that consumer rm command so if we look at the help we'll see it so we can pass the stream and the name of the consumer and that's just we really want to do this and we say yes now remember if we didn't put the stream or the consumer it would have prompt us so now we can remove our stream and we can also type the name of the stream or we can do help. And we see that you just pass the stream name. Notice it's optional. So if we didn't pass it, it would prompt us. So yes, we want to delete the stream. And so there we go. Our stream is deleted. And of course, now we can't list any consumer because we don't have any streams. And that's it. And so we can stop our consumer. We can stop our producer and we can stop listening um stop our watch command of course we can also shut down nats at this point if you're not using it and so that's it so what we've done we've seen how to create a stream how to consume messages from that screen stream how to be a durable consumer how to purge messages from the stream and how to delete the stream if you reach this point in the video and you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing we'd love to have you as a subscriber of the channel for my returning subscribers, thank you so much. I appreciate it very much. And see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.